Seven essential first aid tips for carers. I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com and I wanted to give you some very quick, um, helpful tips so that if you are responsible for caring for anyone, whether you care about um, an elderly parent or an older relative, or if you are a carer for someone who um, is disabled or needs a little bit of extra help, um, hopefully these tips will be helpful. Okay, so starting off with the really serious stuff. Ensure that you understand um, what happens if somebody is unconscious. So if somebody is unconscious and they're lying on their back, their tongue can flop back and block their airway. So it's really important that you understand that if they are lying on their back, you need to open their airway, so tilt the head and lift their chin, check if they're breathing or not, and if they are unconscious and they are breathing, you need to turn them so that they are in the recovery position. If they're in the recovery position, their tongue will flop forward and, um, and the contents of their stomach will drain out and this will allow um, the airway to remain open. So really important that you understand the basic premise of, of um, the airway and what happens. So when you are unconscious, because your tongue is an enormous muscle, um, it will go floppy and it will naturally block to the, drop to the back of your throat. Um, at the same time, the helpful little sphincter you've got at the top of your stomach, instead of constricting and keeping everything in your stomach, it relaxes in open. So if you are lying them, um, lying forward um, like that, then uh, the, the contents can actually drain out. So let gravity help you. And that's what happens with the recovery position. So with the recovery position, you are putting them in a position where they are on their side. Um, and I've got lots of videos and helpful step-by-step -step directions that can show you how to easily put somebody into the recovery position using their leg as a lever so that you are not having to maneuver them or hurt yourself getting them onto their side. This recovery position saves lives, so really important that you feel confident putting somebody into the recovery position. And you really don't need to be strong to be able to do it. So um, there are all sorts of really helpful resources I've got on firstaidforlife.org.uk and onlinefirstaid.com, free resources that can help you to do that. Okay, so that's the recovery position. If they are unconscious and they are not breathing, then you will need to give them CPR. Now CPR is when you are being the life support machine for them. So when you are pushing on the chest, you are being the heart for them. And in pushing down, five, um, you are actually squeezing the heart through the rib cage so that you are compressing the heart. So you need to be pushing down hard and fast on, on the center of their chest. You give 30 compressions to two breaths. Now, during COVID times, if you're a bystander, you wouldn't be um, giving the breaths. You would just be um, giving compressions. If you're looking after someone in your own family, then we know that breaths and compressions give somebody the very best chance. So if you feel comfortable um, and safe doing it, then give them compressions and breaths, okay? So for an adult, it's 30 compressions um, to two breaths uh, and, and keep going. Okay, so that is the really scary life-threatening side of things. The other life-threatening one is choking. So make sure you know how to help if somebody is choking. Choking is really frightening and choking is silent. So if they are gagging and struggling, um, to, to, to clear it themselves and they're coughing and spluttering, then let them clear it themselves. That is a natural response that they can clear um, and cough up more effectively um, themselves. So let them cough it up themselves. Um, if they are silent, it means that the airway is blocked. Okay, so if they are silent, you would check to see if there is anything obvious that you can help them with um, and you just remove that with your finger and thumb. 
Um, don't finger sweep round or do anything, you could make things worse. You would then lean them forward, support them on their chest, make sure that they're not going to nosedive into the table or anything. Um, lean them forward and hit them hard in the, um, in the centre of their back. Um, one and check, two and check, three and check, four and check and check up to five times and that's five firm back blows because you're trying to remove the obstruction that way if it hasn't come out on those first five um, back blows then what you would do is the old abdominal thrusts um, used to be called the Heimlich maneuver where you go between the bottom of your rib cage and your tummy button you make a fist like that put the fist like this and you pull in and up so from behind them, you pull in and up in a J-shaped motion, and that's like bellows, forcing the obstruction out. If you were on your own and you were choking, you could do that to yourself or push yourself over the side of a chair. Okay, so you would do that, in and up, and out with the obstruction, out the obstruction would come. So up to five times there, and then back to the back blows. If it hasn't come out on those first five back blows, you would get help on the way. Okay, um, bleeding. Make sure you know how to stop serious bleeding. So you would grab something and apply direct pressure. So some non-fluffy material, apply direct pressure. Don't rush to wash it because you'll just wash that precious blood straight down the sink. So direct pressure. If they're showing signs of shock, lie them down and elevate their legs and get help on the way. Um, ensure you know how to help with an EpiPen if you have somebody that's got a serious allergic reaction. So make sure you know what to do with that. And seizures, make sure you are confident helping if somebody has seizures. I know that particularly um, with um, some people with uh, various um, learning difficulties and, and disabilities, they, they, um, they can be more prone to seizures. Now, it's really important that you are confident um, recognising that someone's having a seizure, timing it and getting help where, where necessary and that you know how to put them into the recovery position after the seizure's finished. You time the seizure because whilst the seizure is going ahead, they are unable to circulate um, the oxygenated blood as efficiently as when they're not having a seizure. Therefore, if it goes on for longer than five minutes, you need to be contacting the emergency services and telling them that that's the case. Or if they have repeated seizures without a break in between, you need to tell them that that's the case so that they can be treating it as a, a higher level emergency. Because seizures are actually relatively common and most of the time they're not life-threatening. So we need to communicate that extra level so that the emergency services know when um, it is serious. Ensure that you know how to help if somebody's had a fall and how to help them get themselves up and how to advise them how to do that as well. So getting themselves up without hurting themselves or if no help is available, how they should be looking after themselves whilst waiting for, for, um, for help. In an awful lot of older people in particular, when they've had a fall, they end up with pressure sores and they can end up um, being seriously ill with hypothermia and sadly sometimes they die from that. Um, so really important that they understand um, that they, they have something with them that can enable them to call for help and they understand the importance of doing that and that they move themselves around a little bit on the floor um, if they're unable to get themselves up so that they are wriggling and changing their, their body weights to make it less likely that they will get a, a pressure sore and that they're grabbing something to wrap themselves up in if at all possible. If they're able to get up, um, again we've got lots of information on this, but they need to find something solid and do it in a very steady step-by-step -step, um, side by holding on to the solid thing with both hands and then going up to one leg and then the other leg and then bringing their head up last in case their blood pressure is a little low and it makes them feel wobbly and fall over again. And all sorts of things as well to prevent falls. I mean, statistically, the home is the most dangerous place to have um, to, to, <laughs> to be. There's about 6,000 deaths a year from accidents in the home. 
Um, the majority of these happen in your lounge and your living room, but the most serious ones happen in the kitchen and on the stairs. So the last thing I want to make sure that you are confident doing is treating a burn because burns are really serious. And I used to work in the burns department at, at Queen Mary's Roehampton and um, burns have a long lasting impact. So if somebody is burned, really important, you run, them under, run the burnt area under cool running water for a full 20 minutes. Keep them warm and cool that burn. Cool it, cool it, cool it, and cool it. In terms of dressing and things, um, we can go through that in more detail on another time. But the most important and the first aid element is to cool that burn for a full 20 minutes whilst keeping the other person, the, the person that's burned, um, warm and, and calm and getting help on the way. All burns should be checked out by a health professional. Now, this has been at breakneck speed. I do hope it's been useful. Please share if it has. And as I say, there's far more resources available on our site, free resources on onlinefirstaid.com and firstaidforlife.org.uk. Um, we've got a book, Slips, Trips and Fractured Hips. It's an Amazon bestseller. And we've also got a comprehensive first aid for carers course that um, has all this information in a much calmer, clearer, um, more graphic way with videos and step-by-step -step directions and infographics and test yourself sections. So I really hope this has been helpful. Keep yourself safe. Um, that's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com.